Hi, everyone. Um, first, I wanted to thank all of you who showed up and participated in the mini masterclass on the value of strength training to reduce the symptoms of menopause. Um, I'm really grateful to Dr. Anjali D'Souza for inviting me and, um, and for DCI Medicine um, for providing the kind of healthcare that women these days need um, to navigate the kind of complicated and kind of misunderstood world of menopause. Um, I had promised during that talk to share with all of you a sample of what I would consider a well-programmed strength training uh, day. Um, and I want to backtrack very quickly before I get into the movements. Um, uh, I know that there was a big emphasis in the questions on how much is enough, how much is too much, that kind of thing. And what I encourage you to do is to get a um, sort of move away from the idea of wrong and right um, in, in a really black and white way, and instead embrace the idea that you want to use your current fitness level right now as a baseline for how you determine how to progress. Remember, we talked a little bit about the idea of um, this concept called progressive overload, which is the basis for all effective strength training. We want to make sure that we are doing a little more than what we were doing yesterday or last week or last month. Um, but we don't want to pummel ourselves with great amounts of weight, new intensities, frequency, volume. Um, that's a far cry from where we have been recently. Um, because that's a good recipe for becoming really sore, um, potentially injuring yourself, and then essentially un, un, you know, sabotaging your ability to progress. So um, if for now you have not been strength training or you don't find that your fitness level is really strong, I would suggest that you commit to doing two days a week of strength training for 30 minutes. If you are already um, doing some form of fitness, a little bit of strength training, some other uh, weight-bearing exercise, then if it's already more than two days a week, I suggest that you move to three. And I would say your goal ultimately is for a minimum of three days of strength training with 60 minutes um, per bout or per session. Um, but don't start there. As I said, if you're not used to 60 minutes, um, start with two days a week for 30, then move to two days a week for 45, then maybe go to three days a week of 30 and then three days of 45 until you can get three days of 60. I want to remind you guys that strength training is probably the most impactful for bone density and for muscle building, which is a huge part of um, what we talked about last week. Um, but you also don't want to um, avoid or not do cardiovascular fitness, zone two training or more sort of steady state cardio where you feel like you can talk, you are aerobic, um, should be done ideally every day. Um, and also some HIIT training or anaerobic cardio where you're trying to increase your heart rate to a pretty uncomfortable place. Again, be careful about anaerobic and HIIT training. If you're really unaccustomed to it, I would suggest doing smaller bouts of effort, maybe three days a week, and then trying to move towards uh, four days a week, and then eventually five days a week of 15 minutes of high intensity cardio. Um, and remember that high intensity cardio does not have to look like burpees and box jumps and running um, it's all relative to your current fitness there are some people whose heart rate goes into the anaerobic state from doing pretty simple things because they're deconditioned the more fit you are the more will be required to get you to an anaerobic place all right i'm going to hold the camera here just for those of you who'd like to take notes these are the eight movements i'm going to be reviewing um, I'm going to go through them and just briefly describe what muscles they are working. We talked a little bit about the fact that we are not, uh, in this particular video, not focusing on bodybuilding. We're focused on overall well-being, um, improved bone density, improved muscle strength and size. And so each of your three days, eventually, once you get there, three days of training would be um, all large muscle groups being trained. The first exercise is a squat, predominantly your legs, your glutes, a little bit in your hamstrings. The second is a deadlift where we're hinging at the hip and that would be your glutes, your hamstrings, and your lower back muscles or spina erecti. The third is an overhead press. This would be predominantly your shoulders. The fourth would be a chest press, predominantly your chest, although you will also experience some shoulder work here. The fifth exercise is a reverse fly predominantly the muscles of the upper back, along with some stabilization from your lower back. The sixth would be bicep curl or ring rows. 
That would predominantly be your biceps, although you'll also get some stabilization in um, other parts of your arm. The seventh would be a tricep extension, which is predominantly your triceps, a little bit in your shoulders. And the eighth would be a plank or a hollow body hold, which is predominantly your core muscles. All right, so I'm just about to demonstrate the movements that I just showed on the board. Um, speaking to the number of rounds, reps, and weights, I'm just going to encourage you to use that same idea of what your body is currently accustomed to and then increasing gradually over time. That same concept of progressive overload applies here. So if you've never done these movements, I would say use really moderate weight. Um, I would say for most people, um, for most women of average size, 10 pound dumbbells is probably the weight you're gonna use for the majority of these exercises. I made sure to use only dumbbell movements so that it would be accessible to anyone um, who you know, has a four by four space where you can essentially lay down and stand up in. Um, so you could do the entire workout at home with very minimal equipment. Um, if you could try to do two rounds of the eight movements, and generally speaking, between 10 to 12 reps, that's a good starting point. And again, the weight you would use if you're really new to strength training would probably, probably be 10 pounds for each thing. Eventually, I would like to see all of you try to do more rounds so that you are accomplishing the same workout um, in an hour. So that may mean that you're doing three or four rounds. It may also mean that the movements themselves are taking longer because the demand on your body as you increase the weight and the reps is taking you longer. Okay. So just remember, start where you are now, put a little bit of hot sauce in the recipe. And then when your body adapts to that, put a little bit more hot sauce. So you're basically making what used to feel hot, less hot. You're changing the status quo. All right, the first exercise I'm gonna review with you is a squat. You're going to focus on keeping your chest pretty upright. You're gonna sit your hips back. You are attempting to get your rear end to the same height as your knees. If that feels uncomfortable for you, start with a more shallow squat and progressively get deeper as your mobility and strength improves. You can progress that movement by going into what's called a goblet squat where you're holding a single dumbbell underneath your chin and basically you've just added some weight and a little bit of a core challenge to hold the dumbbell in this position. You can quickly progress it from there by doing two dumbbells in your hands. You wanna have your elbows up at shoulder height and dropping into the squat, trying to eventually break parallel on the depth of your squat. Next exercise is a deadlift. We, um, I'm gonna first demonstrate a deadlift without any weight. I'm going to focus on the fact that a deadlift is done properly when we retract the shoulder blades and make our uh, chest prominent. And we're gonna hinge predominantly at the hips, keeping the arms near to your legs as you go up and down. Ideally, when you are new to strength training, you probably want to do this with two independent dumbbells because it helps you keep your form. Placing a dumbbell in the center encourages and promotes this kind of back position for people who are not very seasoned at keeping their shoulder blades pulled together. You can do this with two dumbbells and you can eventually progress to using a barbell if you wanna increase uh, the challenge, not just in terms of weight, but the length of the bar also increases the challenge. The next exercise is a overhead press. You're going to grab two dumbbells. You're going to place the heads of the dumbbells on top of your shoulders and you're going to press straight up overhead. Not everyone has the shoulder mobility to keep the arms this far back on their body. This is definitely the goal because pressing out in front of you is much more difficult on the shoulders and eventually will lead to some back pain. So you wanna to try to press straight up and develop the mobility and the strength to go straight up over your head without arching your back. So we do not want this position at the top. We wanna to pull the ribs in so that the hips are stacked under the ribs. All right, the next exercise is a chest press. You wanna be laying down for a chest press. You're gonna bring the dumbbells directly over your shoulders and chest. 
the knuckles are in a position as if you're knocking on a door. Your legs can be bent and you want to make sure that you're not in an arched back position. So pull the abs in towards the spine and you're going to open into a 90 degree angle and then press straight up. The next exercise is a bent over reverse fly for your upper back. You want to pull the shoulder blades together in the back, hinge forward like you're at the bottom of a deadlift, bring the dumbbells together directly under your chest, and with soft elbows, you're gonna bring the arms out to the side, try to pause at the top before you allow the dumbbells to slowly return. So you are resisting the weight of the dumbbells on the way down. The next exercise is a bicep curl. You're gonna begin with the dumbbells in your hand. Your palms are facing out. You're gonna keep the elbows anchored to your body so that you cannot accidentally use momentum to bring the dumbbells up to your chest, I'm sorry, up to your collarbone and back down. So what you're trying to avoid is letting the shoulder be the fulcrum instead of what we do want, the elbow is the only fulcrum. The next exercise is a tricep extension. You're gonna grab one dumbbell and place both hands around the neck of the dumbbell. You're gonna bring the weight straight up overhead, making sure that you are in a neutral spine position. And you're gonna allow the dumbbell to touch the top of your back with your elbows staying narrow to your temples and going straight up. The next exercise is a tricep extension. You're gonna grab one dumbbell and place both hands around the neck of the dumbbell. You're gonna bring the weight straight up overhead, making sure that you are in a neutral spine position. And you're gonna allow the dumbbell to touch the top of your back with your elbows staying narrow to your temples and going straight up. The next exercise we're gonna be working on is a plank. You want to bring yourself down to your hands and knees. You're going to place your hands in a position where you can shift your chest forward between your thumbs and you're going to come up onto your toes. I'm going to move out to the side a little bit more so that you can see my full body. You want to be on your tippy toes, your chest between your thumbs, and you want to avoid becoming a triangle or flattening out your feet, which essentially becomes more of a yoga move to stretch your hamstrings. We want to stay on the tips of the toes with the weight over our shoulders and our trunk. If this is stressful on your wrists, you're also welcome to come down to your elbows. You want to hold this for a prolonged period of time until you feel particularly challenged and each week make it harder by going longer. Eventually you could place a weight on your back to make it even more challenging. <laughs> 